surrounded by darkness and all manner of evil, God has made a provision for the preservation of his people. Hence, we can boldly and confidently walk through the uncertainties of life, knowing that God's covenant of protection is in force. John chapter 10, verse 10. I want to sound it clear to everyone, when things happen, in your journey as a believer, learn to categorize them on time. The moment the enemy is doing something and you feel or you believe that God is the one doing it, then you are paralyzed. So when things happen, it's important by scriptures to put them in their various compartments. Now John chapter 10 verse 10 helps you to do that. The thief does not come except to steal. He doesn't come except to steal and to do what? Are you there this morning? To do what? To kill and then to destroy. That's the thief. So when you see stealing, when you see killing, when you see destruction, it's not God that is at work. It's the enemy. Now, he deploys various means, sickness, diseases, spiritual attacks, all kinds of stuff. Just like agency. But at the, at the, at the behind it is the thief. And most of the times those who steal never appears like, like, appear like they are thieves. So that you don't know they are the ones doing it. And that's what happens to many believers. The enemy is doing a thing. It doesn't look like the enemy. So you relax. You, you, are, you are accommodating it instead of launching an attack on time. And this understanding is very important because the ages are getting darker and darker. From last year, the dimensions of the, the, the earth is groaning. Kidnapping here and there, killings here and there, COVID-19 showed up. Every covenant person must develop their faith you will not be a victim in the name of Jesus Christ. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that they may have what? Life. Somebody say, I have life. Life. And that life, and that they may have it, what? More abundantly. Contrast it yourself. The person that came to give life, an abundant life cannot be the same person destroying you and killing you. The thief, and of course we know that the, the devil is a thief. He uses all kinds. He can use diabolical means, occultic means, he can use physical means, he can use climatic means, he can use uh, sickness or disease, but at the end of the day, he's stealing, he's killing, and he's destroying. So this morning, we, because when we say protection, many people look at it from maybe physical protection alone. But protection covers many areas. Physical protection, spiritual protection. Some people don't die because of accidents on the road. They die because of a spiritual attack in their sleep. And they go. God has provided adequate uh, tools for us to experience is protection. Let's go to Psalms 103. Uh, I think that will also encourage our faith. Psalms 103 uh, from verse 1. Psalms 103. Thank you. He said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Why should he bless his holy name? Look at verse 2. He says, Bless my soul, and forget not all his Benefit. Now, this is David speaking before Jesus came. Now, this is how you understand God's provision. This was before Jesus came, died, and resurrected. Now, David is enjoying these benefits. Then I should enjoy it, benefiter. Benefit, benefiter. 
benefited. Because we have a covenant based on better promises. So if this guy in the old covenant can be blessing the Lord for all these benefits, then it should be normal in my life. It should be overflowing in my life. In fact, I should be a distributor of it in my life. In the new covenant. Now what are the benefits? Verse 3. Who forgives all your iniquities? That's God's mercy. Who heals? So he wants to heal my disease. He doesn't want to teach me with a disease. Because your mindset when it comes to divine protection matters. Uh, Austin, you are here. You, you're married. You have a precious uh, daughter. And that daughter offends you and something bad. And you want to deal with that child. Can you give that child cancer? I mean, just because you are very angry. You want to now teach the child a lesson. So I'll, I'll give you arthritis and cancer. You will never break plate again in this house. Because many people have all kinds of demonic mindset that the devil will always use to attack them. God must be teaching my family something with all these problems. No, no, something happened that opened the door. What we should look be looking at is how to close that door. When some of those things begin to show up, when I notice anything around me like that, the first thing is, where did I open the window or the door? That's the first thing because if you don't close it, and you're just talking and talking and talking, something else will happen. Because when the door is open, you, you find some mosquitoes coming in, some other insects will show up inside, close it first, and then deal with the one inside. That's how you fight spiritual warfare. Where have I opened the door? Where, where, where? Is it my tongue? Is it, is it something I, you know, where? And if you are sincere and you are praying, the Holy Ghost will reveal to you where the door was open and then you quickly just shut it. And you, and you stop. the. Look at Acts, is it Acts chapter 12. When that king was inspired by Satan, it had to be Satan. When you see killing and destroying, they arrested, uh, what's his name? James, the apostle, and he was killed. Was killed. For what? Because he's preaching the gospel. For healing the sick. It must be the devil. And then when the devil saw that he was walking, he proceeded further to do what? To arrest Peter. Wanted to kill Peter too. That's how the devil operates. But what did they do? They started praying. That prayer closed the door and then was able to deal with the attack. And Peter was rescued. If it was God's plan, why did they kill Peter? Who forgives all your iniquities? Who heal all, heals all your diseases? Verse 4. Who redeems your life from destruction? Can we have this in any other version? One version says, who rescues? It's not the one coming to destroy. In fact, he wants to rescue me from destruction. Any version you can have, NIV, you know, from destruction. We will not be destroyed this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, why, why did you go to TPT? That's far. Okay. You have rescued me from hell and saved my life. You've crowned me with love and mercy. Can we have, I mean, David wasn't talking about hell here. He didn't know about hell here. <laughs> He's talking about physical rescue because he enjoyed that in all the words that he fought. Who redeems, aha, I like this. Who redeems your life from, that pit is graveyard at the wrong time. He crowns you with love. And, and these are the benefits that David was enjoying. Then how much more you that is of the new covenant. So this year, we also will be able to lift our voice and thank God for these benefits in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. So what I'm doing this morning by the Holy Ghost is to reignite your faith for covenant protection. Now, covenant shows a contractual agreement between two or more parties. A covenant. So when it comes to covenant of protection, next Sunday we're talking about favor. I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating that. But when you hear covenant, covenant, that means there is a part I have to play and there is a part God is going to play. It's a covenant. It's not just sleeping and say God will always do everything. It's a covenant. There is a man word part and there is a God word part. Now God's own is too eternal. It's too consistent. It's ever faithful. But the challenge always shows up on our own part. So we're going to be looking at some of the things we have to uh, put in place by the help of the Holy Spirit to help us work uh, in, um, in the covenant. The first thing I want to mention uh, in this particular service 
is the is faith in the blood of Jesus. Faith in the blood of Jesus. Hebrews 12 verse 22. Faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. Um, Pastor Dipo, if you remember, I think Psalm 91, it says, A thousand may fall on my right and ten thousand on my left. But what? Now, that's to help you see that there are things that will always happen in the world that is happening to 11,000 people or 11 million people does not mean it, it can happen to you. That's number one. Number two, but if I can somebody say a thousand may fall on my right, ten thousand on my left, it will not. That means there's something that is covering him. How did that thing miss him? I mean, it's happening to a thousand, and then ten thousand on your left and your and it doesn't touch you. That means there is something on your life that separates you from all those thousands, perhaps. Now that is what happens in the realm of the spirit by the blood of Jesus. In fact, in the, in the old covenant, in Exodus, it was described as the pass over blood. Every time we partake of the communion, you're doing it in church or privately, the blood of Jesus is our Passover covenant. And that's the only way I can explain what happens to David. If it's happening to a thousand, and then it jumps me and hit a ten thousand, that means it passed over. Pass over. So it's the blood of Jesus. That's why when we're praying and you see some things happening, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. You are enforcing your pass over. You might not be able to help the thousand. You don't hate them. You love them. You might not be able to help the ten thousand. But you know, say love your neighbor as your, uh, yourself first. In that sense. So I plead the blood of Jesus. But many people plead the blood. They don't understand the mystery behind it. They say religiously. And we are in a day when you can almost say a thousand here, ten thousand there. God, I am separated by your blood. Glory to God. Look at it. Look at it. Hebrews 12, 22. Quickly. Hebrews 12, 22. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God. The heavenly Jerusalem and to an innumerable company of angels. 23. To the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven. To God the judge of all and to the spirits of just men made perfect. 24. To Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. To Jesus the mediator of the new. And to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. The blood speaks. Oh, the blood speaks. That means it has a voice. If you are speaking, you have a voice. And then he says that, you know, the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. Than that of Abel. Okay, let me look at what happened to Abel. Many of us know the story from uh, Bible knowledge or from your recent study. Uh, let's go to, I think that was that's in Genesis. Is that Genesis chapter 4 verse 9? But just to help you see that in Mount Zion, the church of Jesus Christ, we have the blood of Jesus that speaks. He's alive, isn't it? So his blood is speaking. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? <laughs> now look at this. And God said, what have you done? The voice, somebody say voice. The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. This was what the writer of Hebrews is quoting. He's speaking better things than the blood of Abel. Now, 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 the voice of Abel's blood cried to God and God responded. Verse 11. Verse 11. So now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened his mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. Verse 12. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield the strength to you, a fugitive and a vagabond you shall be on the earth. <laughs> and Cain said, ah, my punishment is greater. Now, my, 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 my emphasis here is, the voice of Abel cried, and God responded, how much more the voice of the blood of Jesus Christ. 
And I, I beg to say this. That blood is crying all those things you see in Psalms 103, 1 to 5. They call it the five-fold redemptive benefits. It's crying for mercy. That's why scripture says it's crying better things. Abel's own is crying vengeance. You know, you must, you, must, you must fight for me. My brother has killed me. You must punish him. But Jesus Christ's blood is crying for what he paid for. Number one, he paid for my sins. That's why when we, when we are wrong, whether they catch you or they don't catch you, you go to God and, and apologize and repent and present the blood of Jesus for mercy. Who forgives all my iniquities? And then that's why when we are partaking of the communion, when you drink the flesh, I mean the blood and eat the flesh, you're experiencing healing. Who heals all my diseases? That blood is crying for sound health. And then who rescues me from destruction? That blood protects one of our uh, ladies. In, it was very funny. We had covenant protection today. I, I was at home yesterday doing some stuff. And then I got a message from one of our ladies in church. I'm sure she's watching this morning. He said, Pastor, covenant of protection is real. And showed me the picture. Just yesterday, she was going somewhere with a friend. And a car just from nowhere. And she sent the picture of that there from nowhere. Bam! He said if the hard driver was speeding ahead of that, the story would have been different. She was shaking, of course. I said, this is covenant of protection. That's rescue from what? Destruction. <laughs> it's real. The plane that will crash, you will not enter it in the name of Jesus Christ. Your blood will not be spilled on the highway this year and anyway in the name of Jesus Christ. This message is cast. It's cast because people don't know how to interpret things when they happen. Or we use sentiments or traditional thinking or village proverbs to describe things that happen. The blood of Jesus speaks and it will speak over our lives this year in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I speak over everyone under the sound of my voice and this great church, oh Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over every family in the name of Jesus Christ. And there are dimensions to the blood. We're going to be digging into that because as the devil is getting more wicked, which we are going to get more spiritually sound or spiritually equipped. There is a part of praying, you know, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. And there's a part of um, the communion. We do that uh, the covenant night on Friday. We'll be having the communion. You don't want to miss that. The communion just to seal up the three days prayer and fasting and the covenant night. And there's a part of sprinkling. It's in the New Testament. You saw it there. And to the blood of sprinkling. It's there. I mean, it's there. What they did in Exodus beyond the eating of the thing was to sprinkle it. Something happened at home some time ago. It was a bit of a, it could have become a serious crisis. And I said, Lord, what should I do? He said, get the blood and sprinkle the family. I said, no problem. Because the same way you do communion blood, right? You just do it in a basin. It's the same blood. And I, and I opened Hebrews 12. And I said, Lord, your word is yea and amen. And I, and I played the blood and I just sprinkled everybody. Is it, is it, is it against, is it, is it a sin to do that? Is it, is it not better to live than to die? And everything stopped. Stopped. Just sprinkled everybody. I called our daughter. She said, Daddy, what are you doing? My friend, receive this thing now. <laughs> receive it. And I'd finished. I was going. And the only girl said, are you not sprinklable? That's me. Ah! <laughs> and I was. And I mean, <laughs> glory to Jesus. And I, and I, <laughs> you will not be kidnapped. Okay, so in case we want to have a blood of sprinkling service, they are doing ritual. No problem. It's a good ritual. It's the blood of Jesus. Okay, so I'm just giving you dimensions so that I, I, I don't want to fall victim that I didn't tell you the truth. Maybe God will ask you to do that in your privacy one day. Maybe God will ask us as a church to do blood of sprinkling service. But you will not die. You. you will see the end of this decade in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at COVID-19. How do you explain it? How do you explain it? How do you explain it? Oxygen, no, no day. And the oxygen that is cast is not only in Nigeria, it's globally. You, you, say, you don't say, you don't spring blood. Ah. Mystery, meet mystery. You appear mysterious, I use covenant mystery. Nadabaya. Ah. Eh? Ah, no. You will not die. I will not die. 
So the blood of Jesus speaks. The blood. So anytime we're having communion, on Wednesday we have communion, Thursday communion, Friday we have another communion. We will we'll keep communion in it. But it's not just the communion or the praying, it's the understanding that guards it. It's understanding that makes the difference. For instance, if you have a robust understanding of the name of Jesus, when you are praying with that name, you have more resource than the person just shouting the name of Jesus, Jesus. You can shout Jesus as he die. What matters is the enlightenment, the light backing what you are saying. For instance, in law, if you go to any place to make a demand and you are using by authorization, they call it a power of attorney, right? Somebody else's name that has power there, let's say the president now, and you want to do something in a particular place, and you go with a letter, signed, duly signed in the name of the president, it is not you that is making a demand. Who is making a demand? It's a, that's why when, when, when they see the letter, they, they, they change, because it's not you. It's the, it's the person that sent you. It's the name. And the response they give to you is not in your height. They are illiterates that they've given letter to get employment. It's not them. It's the name. And the extent of their response to you is, the, is to the extent of the power of the name. Okay, for instance, let's say Pastor Deepo is a local government chairman. Uh, which local government do you want to be chairman? Because of a local government. And then you want, and I'm looking for a job. You now say, I'm the local government chairman of because of a local government in Lagos, I want to send you to Asso Rock. He now drafts a letter and signs, and, you know the signature? Because of a kind of signature. And signs it. I said, go to Asso Rock and tell them the local government chairman sent you. Now the response we based on, is it local government? Did they say Asso Rock? This, this presidential place? No. But if I get a letter from Asso Rock, duly signed by even the first lady alone, and I bring it to him in Kosovo local government, he will be shivering and moving up and down. Not because of me, but the level of power. So when you are using the name of Jesus, anything you have seen that name or that person do in scriptures, is still doing. This understanding revolutionizes your thinking. If you healed yesterday, you can heal today. If the wind, the wind, the wind can hear him, then I can use that name to deal with elements. Storm responds to him. And he rose up and he rebuked the wind. And he rebuked the storm. And the storm came down. That means when I see a storm and I say in the name of Jesus, come down. It has to obey. Well, it does if you understand. So at times, I've had people in church at times, maybe they have a crisis in their home and they call me and say, Pastor, the thing is escalating. And they need counsel. I said, no, before we counsel, let's counsel this storm. Oh, you have counseling. Before people sit down and say, what did you do? He slapped me. What did you do that they slapped you? I abused him. Why did you abuse him? He, was, he abused me three years ago. Did you forgive him? I remembered again. <laughs> before you get to all those details. Let the storm calm down. So at times, just get into your privacy. You, you, you stir up your faith. And you say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, concerning this family, this rising storm, I command you to seize now. Every demonic activity, every confusion in that place, I command. And then you see things calm down. They might not know what happened. Then you're like, can I invite them for meetings? You can do that in your business. When you, you go to a meeting and then everything just looking somehow, crisis, uh, one uh, board member is saying this one, another person from another call, ah, what's all this nonsense? Say, like, excuse me, I cannot use the bathroom. Go to the bathroom. Father, thank you because I'm the seed of Abraham. Father, this storm must hear me in the name of Jesus. I command that crisis that is brewing up, that wants to tamper with this business, I command you to be still in the name of Jesus. You now come out smiling and sanitize your hand and then. And then go and see that. You just see how they will say, okay, let's just, they, they, they just change. Mike Mudok was in a place for a meeting and he met a lady. The lady was just, you know how you meet some people that you felt the demon send them to you? Early morning, just very obnoxious, irritating. Ah, did I offend you? you know? He just said, excuse me. He went, he said, and he said, I bind this disfavor and I release favor. 
When you bind one, you lose the other one. I release favor. And then he said, when they got back, <laughs> it's like something left the woman. Hey, okay. Ah, you know, the way the Holy Spirit uses you to bless people, demons use people to oppress people. So understand that. The way the Holy Ghost will come on you and say, ah, bless your mom, or bless your dad, or bless your pastor, or bless your friend, or pray. Something good, something great. The same way, spirits also motivate people to do evil things. It was the devil that motivated that king to kill James in Acts chapter 12. And they had to pray and arrest that stupid demon. And the thing stopped. Not only that he stopped, the, that king died in that chapter. This is warfare. Glory to God. So, um, we must um, learn that. But my time is uh, going, but let's also... Um, so, I've already touched that a bit, but let me just touch it well. In the school of protection... Uh, you need to learn to decree. It's warfare. You have a dream in the night. And you know this dream is not okay. I mean, there was a time I had a dream about uh, somebody in my family. When you wake up, you are, maybe you are even sweating. Ah, Father, thank you because you rescued me from destruction. I decree. I, when the president decrees, the local government chairman must obey. Am I making sense? I mean, local government, you know. We have local government. We have state government. We have federal government. When the president issues a decree, it's binding on the local government. But when Pastor Dipo <laughs> decrees in course of a local government, the president can overrule it. Just like Donald Trump, when he was president, he makes some certain decrees in the U.S. Now that power has left him, the new person has decreed that Yami must get his visa. Glory to God. No more denial. Yami yeah, must go to U.S. to do ministry, to do vacation. He just, the first, he just signed it, just, it's a decree. But if Pastor Dipa makes a decree and the president hears it and forgets to counter it, what he says is binding. So many times the devil is issuing decrees in our lives. Some things you hear in your thoughts. Some, some evil thoughts, some fearful thoughts. They're like decrees, testing your ground. If the president, he, he say they are discussing it. It's not a decree. They are thinking about it. Why they are still doing that? Whatever decrees on ground, from whatever, is still going to bind it. But until they issue their own counter decree, that will not stop. So please, uh, we talk about negative speaking. It's bad. What's off is silence. Where should not be silent? That one is worse. You just allow the devil to do what he wants to do. What he has said. So you have a thought that is not okay. I decree that this thought will never happen. You now decree what will happen. And by the way, you also agree that even our president makes a decree, is it binding on American president? <laughs> because all these things are power levels. But in the realm of the spirit, we occupy the highest. Far above principalities and powers this is understanding that boosts your confidence. Because what I'm saying is not praying to God. That's a part of that. I'm talking about decreeing. You decree when you understand your authority. That this thing is under me. Demons are under me. Spirits are under me. Situations are under me. So I issue my decree. You know, sometimes when the government issues a decree about coffee, the first night, they first look like they are disobeying. But by the third night, everybody settles into the decree. So when you make a decree, don't now go and be looking outside. I see apple. And if nothing happens, you now be doubting. I don't think I have power to this decree. Oh, this decree thing. No, they don't do it like that. Oh. You understand what I'm Just decree. I keep decreeing. The thing we answer. When they say they're closing border, you know, are you sure the president has said it? They said it. Oh, after three or four days, the thing will be short. Don't, don't use things you are saying to cause doubt to enter your system. It will answer. Especially when you are violent about it. I mean, you speak to projects like this. You speak to situations like this. You speak to fires in your office. You have been staying on this table for too long. Money can't come from you on the table. Oh, right, go and produce. Go, angels, go. And then you see them calling you concerning those uh, proposals. And the family situations, physical situations, you speak to it. And you grow in this thing. Uh, there was a time I saw a swelling on my hand. Some few months ago, a swelling. I looked at it, I showed Pastor Bimbo, I said, 
And then we pull rub, you know, and then the thing was just there. And then one day the Holy said, you got to speak to it. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I don't know where you're coming from, what it is, but this shouldn't be like this. So I speak to you to find your way and return to normalcy in Jesus' name. Amen. And I left it. After some times, it was a bit smaller. After, na na na, it has gone back to normal. So you grow in this thing. As you study, you'll be seeing your power when it comes to decrees. Your mouth will not be closed when it should be open in Jesus' name. Okay, I, I think I'm going to dig deep into that in the next service. And then let me close here by talking about spiritual covering. Genesis 13 verse 5. Genesis 13 5. There are battles that might come that are beyond you. That's why God has put you in a spiritual fold like this for backup. I don't know whether I've watched those movies when there's a, there's a crime somewhere or ongoing scene and then they send like four policemen and when they get there and they see that the, the opposition is more, say, what they do? Back up. They call, say, we, we can't handle this one. No. They call for backup straight and then you see the back. If the backup delays, they can be victims. For sometimes they even turn aside and call for backup before they face the thing because you're just going to, like suicide. So it's, it's still the same about warfare. There are, there are things that come to us. I mean, the way this season is, you can't be fighting by yourself. I was speaking in a conference some weeks ago. I said, make use of the resources around you. Tell your mom to pray for you. Tell your friends that are close to pray for you. Don't be relying on your own energy. If the thing overwhelms you, you'll be a victim. What is the use of good friendship when they cannot add power to your power? What is the use? If you are married there, yeah, that's why you can't be living in strife. It's foolishness. When your wife or your husband prays for you, boy, things happen. Uh, I even, what I do is I give my wife like a project. You know, I'll first hail her. Baby, I just, I don't know. Anytime we pray like this, things happen. I, I, there's something about you, man. <laughs> Glory to God. You're just smiling like this. And when you're doing that, the soldier is getting ready. What next? Let's kill it. That's how you fight now. When you call soldiers together to fight, you know that I say, sorry, we lost the last war, but you see, let's try this one. Would they, would they be willing to fight? <laughs> and I said, baby, there's this thing coming up. I need you to pray about it for me. I know. I said, I have to be praying. I said, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, glory to God. Two are better than one for they have a better neighbor. But they are labor. Some of you have wives that maybe they're not working full time, but they are prayer warriors. That warrior prayer is more than any business. May you not collapse in business in Jesus' name. You're sleeping snarly at 12 times. Uh, uh, and that one is on and he's praying for your future. I say, I don't know, my wife needs to be more productive. What is that one? There are some of you that have friends that <laughs> their core ministry is even prayer. Ah, glory to God. You know, we have some missionaries that we support as a church. Um, um, they, ah, my time. Oh, glory to God. This is great. Uh, missionaries they, they're in South, West Africa and we send them monies every time, you know. So they came uh, this January, we had some time just to review what they are doing, the mission work in Niger Republic, the mission work in West Africa, the mission work in, uh, in the village, in uh, Agbopa village, where we have a hospital, you know. And then, Holy Spirit said, they should not just go. Let them go and prophesy over the land. Because they are always eager to bless us. We are supporting them. We are, God is using us to keep their ministries exciting and alive. The reward from them is not us collecting things from them. But you can, scripture says you can pick spiritual things from them. It's partnership. It's partnership. The same way when I honor my parents, I'm not expecting money from them, but they can pray for me. They can bless me. So I told them, guys, uh, we have this project. We had some delay last year, COVID-19 and all those stuff. But on your way, just go there and just bless the church. One of them said, ah, when I first came, I went there first to prophesy. I said, hey, let's go there again. Before you carry your bag, and prophesy. Use of resources around you. There are some things we won't tell our children to pray about. Their own prayer is even better than your own. You have been sinning too much. The blood of Jesus has been washing you for so much. But they are on their sin. <laughs> and they pray. One of our daughters, our third daughter, yesterday we were, we were eating. He said, Daddy, God, yesterday, day yesterday, he said, Daddy, God has some big plans for the family. When I even heard that, I said, E? From your mouth? Eight year old? Of course. I said, Why did you say that? I said, I had a dream. I said, what was the dream? He said, she saw us packing to a new place. And then the place is far better. And because, oh yes, God has big plans for this family. So I said, amen to that dream. 
Let them pray for you, your children. It helps your own prayer life, and then it helps the synergy. And then in church, there's a spiritual covering in your pastor. He says, you know, the, the church is a sheepfold. Not necessarily physically, but in the spirit. God knows you in the spirit. He knows your local assembly. He knows where he planted you. Don't stray. Stay undercover. How do we stay undercover? Attending service is not staying undercover. It's a part of it. The main covering is your heart. Look at this. Lot also, who went with Abraham, had what? And hurt. Now, this man started prospering because of Abraham. He had nothing to do with him. But many don't know that. Verse 6. Now the land was not able to support them that they might dwell together for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. You know, the, the son, so to say, and the father, they are now prospering. And then suddenly the son begins to think he's better than the father. He's stronger than the father. I can survive by myself. They should leave me alone because of promotion, because of vehicle, because of cash, because of dollars. That's what happened to Lot. Now the land was not able to, he was prospering, but not because of him. Verse 7. Now there was strife between the herdsmen of Abraham's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. They should have written there, there was strife between Abraham and Lot. That's it. That, that, because your, your, your herdsmen will not be fighting Abraham's herdsmen if you have been showing Abraham true respect. In fact, they should not even dare it. The gap is too wide. But when people begin to prosper, and that's what happens to people, you should have, they go up and they just crash because of pride. This guy entered into pride. When you even hear that your herdsman is fighting with your uncles, where, where, which of you? What happened? That you cannot settle amicably? Do you think me and him are mates? <laughs> so, look at verse 8. So Abraham said to Lord, no problem. Let there be no strife between you and me and between the herdsman and your husband, for we are brethren. He's humble. May you not allow the humility of your spiritual head destroy your life. Many people miss this thing because of humility. Abraham, that God spoke to, that God raised, he's talking to his nephew like this. I don't, let's not fight. He too was, yeah, you should not fight. Yeah, 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 you cannot fight. You cannot fight. There shouldn't even be fight in the first place. Next verse. It's not the whole land before you. Should be you are strong. You are powerful. You know that you can handle your life without even anything. If you even leave the church, you are powerful. You are okay. No problem. He says, separate from me. If you take the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, then I'll go to the left. Verse 10. And Lord lifted it. Ah, when I read this verse, hmm. I thought his response would have been different. How can I leave you? God brought me to you. I have prospered because of you. I know God is on your life. Because Abraham was a covering for him. But he lifted up his eyes and saw the plan, all the plain of Jordan that was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, when you are out of covering, you start making stupid decisions. The wisdom flowing from your head will not reach you. It's foolishness that will flow. You'll just be making wrong decisions. Wrong steps. Like the God of the Lord, you know, blah, blah, blah. Verse 11. Therefore, Lord chose for himself all the plan of... It's like, I've chosen my own. Uh, uh, God, choose your own. Go and read the story of Lord. It's very pathetic. His end was bad. But from that time, he started going down. And Abraham still went to rescue him, oh. He said, I will die. I will destroy myself. So there are levels of protection. There is a level of you are praying, God, by your blood, I'm covered. There's a level of I'm decreeing. Now, there are higher levels as you go that is this dimension that will rescue you. A higher covering. If you check, ask people that are in business or some kind of, as they move up, especially diabolical people, they sacrifice more as they go up because the battle rages more at the top. And you cannot manage it by ordinary energy alone. And I don't want anything to disturb your greatness. You are in this church as a leader, a business owner, or a career person. That even when you become a multi-billionaire, you should have sense. That your Abraham is wearing, uh, what was uh, John the Baptist wearing? John the Baptist, what was he wearing? Goats, uh, Abby. And eating Cricket. Does not mean you're higher than him and you're wearing designer clothes. That, that your Abraham is living in the forest, in the wilderness. Just looking gangelly there. And you are driving some fantastic limousines. 
does not mean you enter into pride. These are the higher dimensions. So that people can prosper in the church and still be covered from darkness. We will not defeat ourselves with our own hands in Jesus' name. I looked at the story of Gehazi. <laughs> Gehazi was given Elisha's rod to go and pray for a woman. When he put the rod on the tired, scripture says he, there was no sound, there was no voice. The thing did not even shake. He now came to meet Elisha. Ah, ah, he waked not. It's not happening. He? So when I studied that, that's Second Kings chapter 4. By chapter 5, you now see why the rod did not work in his hand. He was lonely. Heart was wrong. It was in chapter 5 that Naaman's story happens. Okay, this guy had been wrong in his heart before the rod is not working in his hand. I'm not saying when you pray about something, it doesn't, it doesn't happen, it means you are, you are rebellious. No, I'm not saying, I'm just happy to see that when you are in sync, the unction works for you. In the hand of your master and in your hand. The same grace flows. But when you enter into rebellion in your heart, like Gehazi, or whatever way, it could be through covetousness, offenses, like Lot, they are fighting, and he was doing like this, fighting with Abraham. The thing stops working. May sickness not resume in our lives. May crisis not resume in our destinies. This, uh, because if I don't teach this aspect, and somebody says, I know the blood, I know the name, I'm okay. No, the, the protection covers. As me, I'm growing up too as a pastor, and this church is exploding, I need higher coverings. I need the covering of my life to remain. May you not break all the gates that is helping you so that the thing does not hit you. Let's rub on your feet. Let's rub on your feet. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go.